Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We're going to talk about the Squire Vintage Modified Baritone Jazz Master today, aka the most expensive Squire on the used market. Now, I do want to be upfront and honest. I don't track the value of Squires. This is just one that intrigued me because of how expensive it was, and it just seems the prices keep going up. And there's two very good reasons why this budget-friendly guitar has become so popular. So the first reason is, look at this thing. This is a 30-inch baritone guitar. That's right, this is very similar to the Fender Bass 6. It has the exact same scale length. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I love my baritone guitars. And I typically don't even drop tune them or anything. I just think they sound fantastic even in regular tunings. And my favorite baritone has to be the Buckethead Les Paul. This is a 27 inch scale length. So it's not every day you find a guitar that dwarfs the Buckethead signature. I can't even fit these things all into the same frame here, but you can see this is just a massive guitar. But the reason why most people enjoy baritone guitars is because they handle drop tunings really well. We're not talking like drop D tuning where you slightly tune down that E string. We're talking drop E. That's right. <laughs> All the way down the scale back to where you started from. This is a super heavy guitar if you want it to be. And the reason why some of these have become so popular is there's a band called Loathe, and the guitarist of that one uses one of these. And due to that influence, many YouTubers have actually picked these things up and also stated their love for them. People like Andrew Baina. Even Frog Leap Studios. I really hate to see what's gonna happen to the used market after this video because that is the most exposure I think a Squire instrument can get that is out of production. People like these things for a reason, but it's not just for detuned settings. You can also do regular tuning if you use really, really light gauge strings or just other alternate things. Like I bet Ichika Nito would be able to do super justice to a guitar like this. But in case you're curious, brand new, this guitar was $449. What a steal, right? You get this interesting finish, a super baritone scale length. But on the used market today, they're gonna range, if you're lucky, about 400 all the way up to 800 bucks. And that's if you can find one. I eventually got so desperate for this one, I paid what I consider top value. But this thing's like mint condition showroom. I mean, it still has the plastic over top of the pickups. It still has it on the back of the neck plate. This is like the most perfect example to document because it's as the guitar was new. Nothing has been changed. But besides being a baritone, the other reason why this guitar is popular is the finish. It's called Antigua. This was something that was introduced in the late 60s on the Fender Coronado 2. And the story behind this finish is the body binding process of the Coronado 2. One time there was an error and it actually burnt the sides of the guitar. And that's what kind of gave it this blackish hue on the edge. But in the mid to late 70s, they also brought this finish out on pretty much every other Fender guitar. There's small limited runs, so you can find Telecasters in the standard, deluxe, and custom formats. There's Stratocasters, which was my very first Fender guitar, a late 70s Antigua Strat. There were acoustic models and basses. I mean, just look at these things. They're so uniquely interesting. I love them. But a lot of people think it looks like a baby poop brown color. I've got three kids. I don't know what you guys are feeding yours, but Antigua has never came out of my kid's butt. <laughs> so I'm definitely on the boat that loves this finish because it just looks old timey to me, like country Western. It's like old film that has aged that kind of yellowish green hue. It's just awesome to me. So the fact that it's a baritone and you can do some country spaghetti Western stuff on it, that really appeals to me. But in my search for an Antigua finished guitar, I could never find a cheap modern guitar that had this finish. The only one I could find was in the 2000s. They did a made in Japan Stratocaster in Antigua. And oh my goodness, that is an awful looking Antigua. I understand why people would hate Antigua if that's what they saw for the very first time. That is a barf finish and I hate it. The only modern day Antigua I could find was the 2008 Fender Eric Clapton Strat that they did it right. So imagine my surprise, since I have baritones saved on my reverb account, that I saw this show up and it's like, oh, 
They did Antigua, you know, in a very attractive manner on a new guitar that's not all that expensive and it's a baritone? It was just such a beautiful match made in heaven for me. This was on my hunt list for a good six months before I finally just broke down and bought this one. The Squire Vintage Modified Baritone. I did not even realize there was a famous guy who used this. I did not know about any of those other YouTubers talking about them. I thought it was just something I had discovered. But these things were around from 2014 until about 2016, but then they got replaced with this. The Squire Vintage Modified Blackout Jazz Master. So yes, this is a double feature review today. We're gonna have to tear two guitars apart. This is essentially the exact same guitar with just a few minor modifications. So pickups and electronics, you can see these are all the same. The pick guards are different because the Antigua ones are actually painted. That paint will wear off. You could scrape that off and have a white pick guard if you're a dummy. <laughs> you just have a regular black three ply one right here. You can see that all the hardware has been blacked out as well, but the biggest difference of these guys lies on the neck. The Antiguas have binding on it, but these guys do not. And it's amazing how different these necks feel. This one is a little bit more rounded in feel, whereas this one kind of has more of a flat feel at the top. It's still a rounded neck, but just not quite as rounded as this one. I actually prefer the feel of this neck, but I prefer the looks of this one. Headstock wise, you can see the nut color is different and you have a painted headstock, whereas this one is natural and your logos are just a little bit different in color as well because of that. And in my unboxing video, somebody told me the body woods were different. But in looking up spec sheets, I'm told that both of these are basswood, but this guitar does weigh about twice as much as this body. I mean, this thing, it weighs almost nothing. So if that's something that you're worried about, definitely go for the black one. But I'm guessing that this thing is gonna be more neck divey. Wow, honestly, it's not too bad. I thought this thing was just gonna go straight to the floor. So it's just a lighter body and it balances. That's impressive. So I really don't think you have to worry about neck dive on these guys. I am definitely surprised and impressed by that. <laughs> But the other thing about these is they feel like such quality instruments. I would not sneeze at paying 600 to 800 bucks for one of these because it really does feel like that much of a quality guitar. If somebody would have slapped a Fender logo on here, I literally would have believed it. These Fenders were definitely made very well and they're both made in Indonesia. And the black ones also retailed at the same $449 price point. So now that we know a little bit about the history of these guitars, let's go ahead and throw them on the workbench and take an individual look at their parts and specs. All right, so I'll try to make this quick because we got two guitars to go over here. We'll see if there's any other little spec differences, but I was able to find the original old Squire listing and that confirms they're both basswood bodies. But something that I honestly did not even realize about this guitar is how much it is not a jazz master. I've only had that ultra jazz master, so I'm not like super in tune with them, but you're gonna notice there's no routing right here for the usual rhythm lead circuit. So that is completely gone. Usually your toggle switch is actually up here and then you have your volume tone and then you have your output jack here. But these goofy little things, I, I, I'm ashamed I never realized it. They have a Stratocaster styled output jack. I actually really adore the layout of this guitar. It's super simple. It's not as complex as some of the other Jazz Masters. That's always kind of scared me away from those, at least for demoing purposes. But our pickups here are Seymour Duncan designed. You can see it says that right there on the pickup cover and it's the JM101N for the neck. If you zoom in there, you can see it says that right there. Then the JN101B in the bridge here. But it's kind of interesting how they mount these. They use a large foam block on top of springs that are hidden underneath this little foam strip. So instead of springs, like on my last one that I was playing with, it's just the foam block and a different kind of spring in the center. But here's what our control cavities look like. They're completely shielded off. You got your shielding tabs right there as well. And then here's what you have to play with as far as the control cavity goes. Then the electronics themselves are nothing too fancy. Looks like 250K alpha branded pots and just your basic three toggle switch selector there. But remember what I was talking about earlier, that these pick guards are actually painted. Even though this is like a new old stock model condition wise, you can see even from the factory, there's a little bit of wear to the paint where the screw was placed in. You can see some light chipping pretty much around most of the screw locations. But honestly, the only one that's really bad is that one. It looks like maybe a small one there. Wow, they really did not do the best job coding these things. And we just have these knurled knobs here on the front. 
As far as pickup readings go, the middle position is 4.18, so that means these will probably be pretty hot. Yeah, 11.4 in the bridge, and then in the neck, oh, surprising, 6.43. That is a surprisingly hot bridge. The output jack itself is nothing too fancy, just your standard one, and that is what the inside of that cavity looks like. But here's another major difference between the regular Jazzmaster. This does not have a tremolo unit in it, so you don't have this giant route under there. This bridge honestly kind of freaks me out. They call it the fixed top loader, and essentially it just sits on those little posts right there. It looks really crude, like to the point where I thought, oh, is there something wrong with this guitar? That doesn't look like it's on right. But that's how it goes, because that's how you adjust your height of the string, so it goes up and down, kind of like a regular bridge, and then it just gets screwed into place with one giant screw right there. But you still have your adjustable saddles. And you'll notice that this one actually has a slight impression right there in the finish from the bridge being set very low. And the back just says designed by FMIC. I just want to offer a small piece of advice if you're ever tearing one of these things apart. When you put the screws back in, you literally cannot even tighten them all the way down or that paint will start to chip again. Like these are just barely tightened down after that first one. That's crazy just how fragile this pick guard is. Now, as far as the later made black one, everything's looking pretty much the same here, except for you will notice that the body routes are just a little bit different. You can see a difference right here. This one seems to be, you know, more uniformly routed, whereas that other one kind of had some weird stuff going on. And there's these strange areas where like the finish didn't take or maybe it was buffed off. I'm not sure because it's not like a polishing compound or anything. You'll see that in a few areas on this guitar. But the pickups are the exact same type. You're also going to notice that they still have the spring and foam setup going on, but it does not have the foam over top of the springs. Honestly, that was probably overkill. That's why they decided to ditch it. But you have the same grounding tabs under here with the shielding paint. So you should be all good to go there. As far as the electronics go, everything's looking the same here with the same alpha branding 250K. But this is just a regular three ply pick guard. It is not painted. You don't have to worry about the paint chipping off of this. And you have the black chrome knurled knobs. And all the rest of the hardware has been blacked out, which includes the top loader bridge, and it also has the same branding on the back of it. All right, now moving away from the body, we can start on the neck. So this one has a bound rosewood fretboard with the perloid block inlays. It kind of looks like a jazz bass now that I think about it, because they have similar inlays going here. And the weight of this one actually feels like a bass guitar. So if you wanted to put some really heavy strings on this and make it like a bass six, but with jazz master pickups, you definitely could do that and it wouldn't feel out of place. As far as the frets go, they are medium jumbo in size and there's 21 of them. And it has a nine and a half inch radius up and down the fretboard so it's not a compound radius or anything too crazy like that and the nut is made of synthetic bone and I went ahead and put some graphite in there as far as neck specs go I get a 1.65 inch nut width which is to factory specifications and by the 12th 1.99 that's actually a little bit thinner than most electric guitars that we've been documenting first fret neck depth 0.87 that's a pretty good size and by the 12th what are we at here whoa I'm always impressed how Fender can do that. 0.87 again. So a very super consistent neck. You know, once again, as I was saying, it feels kind of wide up at the fretboard, but it's still pretty rounded at the same time. As far as the face of the headstock goes, it's just your maple neck showing up here. You have the black plastic in the truss rod cavity, and that is where you adjust the truss rod if you need to. And there you can see your Squire Jazzmaster Fender logo with a single string tree. I like all the wood grain on the face of this headstock. You also have a, a little bit of a flame figure right there. And it is true, these do have a 30 inch scale length. Moving on to the blackout version, that's the biggest difference between these guys, is the fact that this does not have binding. So you might prefer that, or you might not. That's just the one cost savings feature that they decided to do, because you still have the 21 medium jumbo frets here with the same acrylic block inlays, and the same 9.5 inch radius with rosewood fretboard. But this rosewood board, it's nice and streaky, it's got a lot of color to it. So if you like boards like that, this one's going to make you more happier than the other one that's kind of a, a more uniform dark color and according to the spec sheet this is still synthetic bone it's just black in color but let's see how this one fares in comparison so oh wow okay 1.7 inch nut width so that's something that's also different it actually has a wider nut width I wouldn't have guessed that it doesn't feel wider 
and it's significantly wider by the 12th fret, so 2.06. They did change up our specs here. So what's our first fret neck depth? 0.86, so that's about the same. Oh, wow. And then it increases to 0.95. I think that's what I'm feeling when I say this one feels like it gets rounder. It's because it actually does beef up a little bit more. But I would have never guessed that the nut widths were that different. I never felt that difference. Now you know. I'm glad I documented both of these in the same episode. So it comes down to neck profile preferences as well as cosmetic preferences. I personally find that this one makes for the better baritone guitar, whereas this one sets up better for being kind of a bass six guitar. As far as the headstock goes, same black plastic in there, but it hides because you have a black face of the headstock here, but still just the single string tree. This is such a heavy set of strings, it's a wound G string. <laughs> The pickup readings on this one, six and a half at the neck in the middle position, 4.23. Is this one hot? Yep, so they are definitely the same pickups. And finally, let's take a look at the back. Nothing too crazy going on, just your traditional little belly cut right here to make it comfortable. No back control plates. You just have your typical strap button right there and one at the top and your squire neck plate. I'm not going to bother taking the neck off. I think we know the neck is original. Then moving up here, we can see the maple neck. It's got a full gloss polyurethane lacquer over top of it. And then you got the kind of walnut skunk stripe going on here. I'm not sure if that's what that actually is on these models. And our serial number back here says designed and backed by Fender crafted in Indonesia. I've got to say the quality of these guitars fantastic don't let that whole made in indonesia thing scare you i mean look at the beautiful figuring within this neck as well and this is a 2016 model you can tell by those first two digits and that's what i was talking about it's almost a 10 pound guitar nine pounds 10.3 ounces same thing's true for the black one nothing too fancy back here just your belly cut same style strap buttons but at this time they're black same squire neck plate, but it's black. But the neck on this one, I don't know if it's just because the body's black and this is just such a sharp difference, but this one almost looks like it's slightly more tinted in my opinion. And same style serial number, but this one was made in 2017. You even have a little bit of figuring within the wood, not quite as much as the last one. And the tuners are the exact same. But geez, this thing is a whole two pounds lighter than the Antigua one at seven pounds, 10.6 ounces. So I'm definitely glad I could document both at the same time because now I think people are gonna start inflating these guys in price because now they know that they have the wider nut width which most guitarists would prefer, but the bass players will probably prefer the smaller nut width of the other one. But it was just kind of cool to see the differences between the two even though on paper, they're the same. But let's go ahead, plug these guys in and hear how they sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now that we know everything about these two guitars, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Listening back to the recordings, for some reason I preferred the tones of the Antigua one. I had this one set up in B standard tuning, so B, E, A, D, F sharp, B, and this one was one step below that in C. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Maybe it comes down to the heavier body woods, but something about the Antigua one, it just speaks to me tonally as well as aesthetically. But I will say this one's probably the more comfortable guitar to play, but it just, it doesn't feel as solid as this guitar does. There truly is something special about everything about the Antigua ones. The only weak link that I'm seeing here are the pickups themselves. They're not bad, but I was definitely surprised at the tonalities I got. So our bridge pickup is a lot hotter, right? But it has this very unique tone to it. It's not like super hot sounding, it's just completely different. It's got a nice roundedness to it. There's sometimes, like back in the recording, that I thought it was actually the neck pickup. It's got such a full girthiness to it. Whereas the neck pickup, when you try to do like more genty type stuff, it works really well for that, but there's still some flubbiness within these pickups in my opinion. But that's me running through a traditional tube amp. The other YouTubers and professional musicians who run these like through plugins and other high-end amps, they seem to be okay with the pickups. But for my own personal tastes, I would probably put something different in here. I love the Pure Vintage 65 Jazzmaster pickup, so a set of those and one of these would be a lot of fun for me. One last question we'll answer, is it a bass or is it a guitar? It can honestly be whatever you want it to be. It could be a six string bass, it could also be a baritone guitar. You might be able to get away with stringing it up with really light gauge strings and make it a regular guitar. But this is one I really truly think it is meant to be tuned low. Because it's literally just about the same size as a Fender bass, even though they traditionally have the 34 inch scale for the flagship models anyways, and these guys are 30 inches. These might not be everyday guitars, but I can definitely see them being an invaluable tool for songwriting. Sometimes you just need inspiration, and a great way to do that is swap up your tuning. And having something that goes super bassy, that's something that I really enjoy. So if you are interested in being the next owner of one of these, I'm sorry, the Antigua one's already spoken for. The black one was spoken for, but then the guy backed out. So this one will be listed for sale on Reverb. Let's go ahead and briefly go over the condition of it. This one's not as clean as the Antigua. You got a few light scratches here and there. Fretboard was just conditioned. The frets were polished up. Basically, it being a black finish, you have a lot of small micro scratches on this guy, but nothing like too incredibly crazy here. Just some light nicks and dings along the edges. Hi there, how's it going? Most of these on the used market seem to be in pretty good shape because people will buy them. They won't necessarily play them every day, so it's kind of like what I'm talking about. It's nice just to have them around. It might not be a daily driver for everybody, it's just a nice tool to have laying around. This black one actually looks pretty cool under black light because the pick guard itself, it kind of has a pinstriping effect and then the inlays on the neck itself glow. Even the face of the headstock has a cool ghostly green color as does the back of the neck. So everything is definitely looking good on this one. Let's go ahead and do the Antigua one just for fun. Ooh, some more interestingness. So the finish down here actually glows a little bit as does the pick guard, it fluoresces and then the binding and the inlays glow. So this is just, you know, a great day for the blacklight test lovers. No breaks, cracks, or repairs to report, but everything is looking good on this one. The only thing condition-wise of this one, besides the light chipping, I did notice a very, 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 very tiny little finished crack mark in the neck pocket but you almost can't even see it at all. You have to get it in the light just right. From the factory, these guys did not come with cases. I'm not even sure if they initially came with gig bags. Most of them come with gig bags anyways. So this one does have a gig bag and the Antigua one was lucky enough to have been upgraded with a hard shell case. So thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today and learning about the strange Jazzmaster baritone guitars from Fender by Squire. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.